Hello, my dear gardening friends. Look at this rose which I'm carrying in my pot. This rose is yelling out to me, please plant me out. So today in this video, we are planting this rose out. I'm showing you how I'm going to do it. And also we are going to talk when is the best time to plant or replant a rose, spring or fall. So when is the best time to plant a rose or replant a rose? Well, the answer is it all depends where you live. The root system of replanted rose needs to be well adjusted before cold weather comes. And if you are living in the colder areas where uh, falls are fairly short and winter is fairly severe, the recommendation is to plant it in spring. The marginally better time would be a spring time to plant a rose. But if you're living in a warmer climate where falls, the autumn, is fairly long and winter is not severe, the root system of the plant has plenty of time to get adjusted and have a very strong start next spring. So for people who live in warmer climates, the answer would be that marginally, only slightly marginally better time would be fall. So we answered that question. It depends where you live. And since I live somewhere, I would consider myself, I live somewhere in the middle. We do have strong winters. I live in zone 6-7, coastal Connecticut, and our falls are beautiful here. Connecticut is famous for marvelous maple display, uh, beautiful yellow and burgundy and orange colors of the fall. Our uh, autumns are fairly long. Last frost day, I believe, is somewhere in uh, borderline uh, October, November. So we do have a nice chunk of time of comfortable weather to plant and do all sorts of replanting and reorganizing in our garden. Weather is fairly good in the fall here and I consider that fall is a great opportunity to introduce and reorganize the garden. So today we are planting this rose out. A little bit about this rose. Look at her. She's very happy here but she can't wait to get out of this fairly small pot. It's a gift which was given to me by uh, Cami, one of the viewers, and she sent me this rose as a little uh, baby this spring. This rose sat in this container for several months and now she's ready to go out. The name of this rose is Peggy Martin Rose and it's a tough surviving rose. I'm planning to introduce her, I will be showing you later, in a kind of tricky space in my garden where she will be serving a lot of functions and because I'm relying on this rose tough nature I'm thinking she will thrive there. Why is this rose having such a tough nature? Well, this rose comes with a history. In 2005, when big flooding happened in Katrina in US, this rose, just imagine, spent two weeks underwater, under salty water, mind you, and survived. And don't look at the small size of this rose. She is a strong um, uh, climber, reaching 15, she's not really a climber, she's a rambling rose, but she can reach up to, up to 15 feet high. And I think my spot where I'm planning to plant her is quite good for her. So let's go and see and I will show you where I'm doing my planting today. Here we are at the back of my garden, facing the house from the back. And this area in front of us is dedicated to, this patio is dedicated to evening dinners. We have strong morning sun here in this area and the evening is shaded by the house. So time for dinners is just perfect here. We have, this area here is shared by several plants. On one side here, we have my beautiful, generous gardener roses growing here, performing very well. In maybe four hours of uh, morning sun, they do get shade here in the afternoon. And since this rose is thriving here in morning sun, mind you, morning sun is always better for the plants, uh, when you look lower at the base of plants, 
you will see that there are two roses growing on both sides and one of them is growing fairly close to the foundation of the house. I kind of uh, was risking that plant my generous garden as this baby rose is not going to thrive here, but it does. So let's go to the back and let's see what's happening here. So as you can see, I took bricks out. I created a deep fertile pocket for rose roots to thrive there. And I installed uh, the border made out of uh, wood, wooden border to keep bricks intact. And I wasn't really sure how this rose is going to behave here, but she's thriving here. So my plan is the same with the uh, Peggy Martin rose. I'm going to do the same uh, routine right here at the back of the table. And here at the back of the table, we have wooden stack. We have fireplace at home, so we keep uh, wood for winter. I'm going to move that wooden stack all the way to another side, right there under the, under the uh, wall of our house, of our outside uh, sunroom. And here I uh, was keeping this uh, uh, rack for all sorts of pots and all sorts of uh, gardening stuff. And this area was looking very not attractive. So I got away with it. This area is a very serviceable area. You see we have a hose here. I keep a bucket here to keep water in. So I'm kind of not liking this area to be so, um, so messy all the time. So I took all that stuff out and I'm planning to put my wood here to keep wood away from the ground. I don't want the wood to get, um, you know, to get wet during winter. Plus we have this uh, sliding protection for the wood here from the wall. That would be extra protection for wood to, to stay fairly dry for our fireplaces in winter. So that stack will be gone. And in, in the middle between these two windows, I'm planning to plant my rows out right there near the wall, not too close to the wall, maybe a foot and a half from the wall, because I don't want wall to get uh, mildew and all sorts of problems from uh, strong leaves of my Katrina rose. And the plan is that in the fall, during cool days of the fall, I will be creating um, a strong, uh, some sort of uh, support for that future rose. Now this area is very open, uh, very sunny in the morning and uh, I do have some issues with the yellow color of our house. I'm slightly getting tired of it, but you know, you can't just do this and the color of the house is changed. So what I have to do, I have to reimagine all this area. Just imagine Katrina Rose growing there at the background. This area would be so much better, I believe. Now you see on one side of the table, I do have my sedums growing here. Somebody was asking how much sedum light, uh, how much light sedum needs and how it performs in semi-shade. So look at this guy. He gets only morning sun here, maybe three, four hours. And uh, standing strong, the most what's different is he's slightly paler. His foliage is a little bit paler than my other sedums, which are standing in full sun. But this sedum, which is autumn joy sedum, not all sedums take life in pots very easy. This sedum is the best. Look at this, semi-shade and thriving under several hours of morning sun. So I'm hoping the same will happen to my Katrina rose, which will be thriving hopefully here under morning sun. Here I have, I just went to Home Depot. I bought a plank, which I will be using for uh, keeping bricks tight together around the root system of the rose. And today is a day to move a pile of wood, install my rose, reorganize all this area, and wait for beautiful, magnificent growth from my uh, Katrina rose, maybe this fall and definitely next spring.
everything is done here. All the wood is out. I cleaned it all. So now I'm going to lift the bricks one at a time and let's see where we stand with this. Now the center, I know that the center is right here. I measured it out already. And again, I'm not going to move the last two bricks which are separating the wall, will be separating wall from uh, my rose um, bed. The trick is going to be to lift the first brick. Oh my gosh, I think it's going to be harder than I expected. These bricks are not cemented, so they shouldn't be difficult to lift. They are laying on the sand. Hmm. They might be difficult to lift. Now, as you can see, these bricks are laying on the sand and I don't want to use all this space. The center is here, so I'm going to take only this space and I will take okay. this space and I will relay bricks. Now for this job, I assume there will be plenty of sand here. Yep, all the sand. Bricks are laying on the level of sand. I think I'm going to save the sand. I don't want to throw the sand away. Oh gosh, it's hard as rock before the bricks were laid on it. Yeah, plus with all the walking, I have to really work on the soil. Oh, look at this, hard as nails. All right.
cow manure is a great conditioner of soil and since we have very sandy soils here I live near coastal zone so we have ocean like within 10 minutes driving distance and uh, our soil is very fast draining So basically I'm mixing, trying to do 50-50 of cow manure and soil and let the roots of the rows decide what she wants to do here. Okay, you know what I also will do? I will also use mycorrhizae fungi with this rose for her to thrive here. Let me get it. Here comes my baby rose. For beginner gardener, rose or any plant going into the ground has to be well hydrated and well watered ahead of time. Now here I have David Austin mycorrhizal fungi good thing to introduce together with the roots going into the ground. Mycorrhizal fungi are very good at extending the root system. They kind of collaborate with, with roots of the plant and uh, they contribute to each other's life. And the plant benefit uh, from these fungi because the way they stretch and search for nutrients is so good for the plant. So I'm going to get this guy out of this pot poor thing oh he's getting out quite good hey the root system is not circling around so it means this um, rose is not stressed out which is uh, i was thinking that probably i will see all the roots all around good sign rose did not overgrow um, its space so now without any disturbance i'm going to plant it out into the soil a little, I'm going to plant it a little bit lower than the brick level, not too low, but a little bit lower because I want the water to accumulate. Here we go, approximately. And I'm going to water the area around it because I want the soil to settle down. And by the way, this container is so handy. Instead of just waiting for the hose to fill up the bucket, when I'm ready to water my garden, I put the hose in into this uh, container. I fill the container and my uh, um, watering cans are filled in in no time. My soil is very sandy. It will take literally no time for it to disappear, for water to disappear. What do you say? And I will put these guys up, direct them up, and they will start growing, hopefully. Alright, I think we are ready to fill it in. Before I finish planting, my rows. I want to do a frame here, wooden frame, which will keep all the bricks intact and will prevent them from sliding in and making a big nest here. A plank to this length and a plank to this length. Now I'm going to measure a 
approximately. Where I should cut. Okay, I have my screw, my drills. I'm using these planks. I'm using screws here, whatever I have. This happens to be drywall screws and they're not really for strength. I'm just making sure that these things are not going to slide. I deliberately am not going to put uh, soil as high as bricks because when I'm ready to water, I want water to stay in and not to run out. So, almost like a puddle, you know, forming without spilling out. It's so much easier to water this way. The white wood will age and will blend in with all the other construction. And you know what? I have a funny feeling that this rose needs to be protected from rabbits. Because look at this. You see the skinny growth here? I think this was eaten by the rabbits. And I always kept this rose at the patio. So rabbits didn't like to go there. And then for one night, I put this rose down and look what happened. So I'm afraid that rabbits might want to get hold of this, so I will install some sort of a little cage here, just for the time being. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this space, this shoot out, because it looks diseased, this one out too, and Rose will be relying on these shoots to keep growing. These plants are a lot of work, but you know what? Once this rose starts blooming, I am sure it's going to be magnificent. And looks like she is a fast grower, you know? All right, baby. Hopefully rabbits are not going to touch you now. And you will have a chance to develop some sort of a stem system here in the fall. Now, mind you, this arrangement is temporary. I'm going to build something here more permanent, install bottom protection, kind of more of a permanent, but that is for the fall. Meanwhile, this will have to do, and this rose will hopefully thrive here. All right, that's it. Job is done for today. Uh, I think that's it. I'm going to clean up and have a siesta because right now is the middle of the day as you can see no sun here my generous garden is catching just a little bit of sun it's the last one for the day and uh, my rose is planted that's it for today thank you for watching i will see you next time